First round of the MLB draft is in the books, and the Toronto Blue Jays have selected a college right-hander with the number 19 overall pick. So let's talk about it. Arden Zwelling, Ben Nicholson-Smith, Sportsnet.ca. This is instant analysis. Ben. Gunnar Hoagland, very interesting, high upside, high risk play for the Blue Jays at number 19. Uh, the upside. Control and command righty. Out of Ole Miss, 92, 94 mile an hour fastball. He's got a slider. He's got a change up for the lefties. Throws a ton of strikes. Very polished, very advanced. You talk to a lot of people, they'll say this guy is a top 10 talent in this draft class. That's the upside. Now, the risk. Gunnar Hoagland blew out his elbow in an outing this May. Underwent Tommy John surgery. Uh, he's very early into the rehabilitation from that. He is going to be sidelined until you would have to think spring, summer. 2022 at the earliest and that's why Gunnar Hoagland was available to the Blue Jays at number 19 that's why he didn't go 10 picks earlier so Ben do you see more of the upside in this selection or do you see more of the risk well there's plenty of both and I think if you're picking really anywhere in the major league baseball draft that's the dynamic that's that's what you're going to be dealing with certainly 19th overall you're not going to get the certainty the high floor that you might get if you're picking second, like the Rangers did, they get Jack Leiter. I mean, he could pitch in the major leagues now, but that kind of pick not going to be available at number 19. So for the Blue Jays, they have to make a determination and they ultimately decided to be patient here and to be willing to accept the rehab that's of course going to come with Hoagland as he comes back from Tommy John surgery, a very involved process and one that they will help him with as he progresses toward his pro debut. But, you know, it's interesting. You look back to guys like TJ Zoic or John Harris, quote unquote, low risk college arms that the Blue Jays have chosen in recent years. Uh, you know, I don't know that in hindsight, we would call those low risk, right? Because they didn't necessarily perform, haven't fulfilled the potential that they had on draft day. And of course, that's true across all 30 teams. That is the nature of drafting in baseball when guys have so many years of development ahead of them. But in Hoagland, they get someone who was trending toward a potential top 10 pick before he was injured. So you get plenty of reward, some polish, some command, along with the risk. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the value the Blue Jays are after here. Um, and it's funny, talking to Jim Callis on our podcast uh, at the Letters last week, he kind of raised Gunnar Hoagland as, as a possibility in this range of the draft and, and connected him actually to Walker Bueller in 2015, uh, which, by the way, not a stuff comparison. Like, these, these guys are totally different pitchers, but the circumstances are pretty similar in that the Dodgers took Bueller at number 24 overall out of Vanderbilt University. He immediately underwent Tommy John surgery, and like you said, they worked him through his rehab. They helped him refine and improve his stuff in the meantime, and he comes out the other end as a guy who you see on the mound now who's clearly a top 10 talent in that draft. So the Blue Jays are going to try to do something similar i think that you know more so like the stuff in profile comparison is probably something closer to jose urquidy with uh with the astros um because similarly right-handed starter not overpowering has a fastball slider change up also a guy who underwent tommy john surgery at 21 uh he just has exceptional command is the thing like that's the the similarity there like 92 94 at the fastball but he attacks the edges with it and he lives on the plate with all three pitches and he doesn't walk anyone gets a ton of soft contact so uh, I think that sort of upside, that Jose Arquiti, like reliable number two, number three starter, I think that is the potential here if Gunnar Hoagland turns out. And look, the hope, of course, is that they can reach that. They can be even a number one. But realistically, if you get a number two or number three starter with your first round pick, that is a major organizational success. We just have to keep in mind how often these picks fail. So to become a number two or three starter, that would be absolutely great the Blue Jays would be thrilled if they can get that because of course you can never have enough pitching you look at this organization the Blue Jays both at the major league level and even further within their minor league system this is a group of young players that leans heavily toward the position player side so they need to balance that out with pitchers like Hoagland you can never have enough and you mentioned Walker Bueller and the Dodgers I mean you look at that organization how they have been very successful with their late first round picks as a winning team Gavin Lux, Will Smith, Walker Bueller, that's what the Blue Jays have to emulate. And if Hoagland can realize 
and deliver on his potential here by becoming, like you said, even a number two or number three starter, that would be a major success. And that's what the Blue Jays will start working toward as soon as they can sign him. Yeah, I think that's that's a big part of what drew the Blue Jays to him is there isn't a ton of reliever risk here. Like this guy should be able to stick as a starter just considering how polished he is, um, you know, the command, the control. I mean, as he matures, you would only, you know, expect that he'll get better in that regard. That's a lot of stuff you're usually trying to teach kids out of the draft and, and Gunnar Hoagland kind of comes prepackaged with it. So he should be able to stick as a starter for some time. Uh, let's touch on the timeline before we go uh, because you know for all those reasons I just cited there's reason to believe Gunnar Hoagland could be a pretty fast riser just considering the polish and, and how advanced he is now Tommy John surgery obviously throws a wrench into that uh, but we could make another connection to Bueller here right because Bueller underwent surgery immediately after he was drafted in 2015 he was back on a mound a year later summer 2016 and then he made his debut the following year in September 2017 so if all goes according to plan, Ben, could you see a similar progression with Gunnar Hoagland where he returns to a mound a year from now? So say spring, summer, 2022, say he starts at high A as a 22 year old, cause he's older. Uh, and then in 2023, he moves up to double A, maybe gets a taste of triple A. And then maybe this is a guy who's making his MLB debut late in 2023, just before his 24th birthday in December, in a funny way, being one of the faster guys to the majors out of this draft, despite missing a year with Tommy John surgery. Well, that that timeline still exists. And, you know, I would point to Alec Manoa as as a perfect example of the fact that that is possible for players who excel in the minor leagues. And it's not easy to do what Alec Manoa did in the minors, uh, but he reached the major leagues within two years of being drafted. And that's a very fast timeline. But as Manoa kept dominating through the minor league levels, the Blue Jays showed that they were willing to respond to that. And they weren't going to stick to preset expectations of, okay, you have to spend a year at high A or a year at double A. That's not the way player development works in today's game, as you know, Arden. So, you know, realistically, if he starts performing, if Hoagland comes back healthy and can start performing, there's no reason that they need to hold him back. And like we were saying before, we know that no matter how many pitchers the Blue Chase can add in trade and free agency, there is always going to be a need for a quality, competent, big league starter. So if he can come close to realizing that, his timetable will take care of itself. And like you said, so, so crucial that the Blue Jays nail these picks, not just this season, but going forward when they anticipate they will continue to pick towards the back half uh, of the first round because they hope to be winning. You have to keep replenishing that farm system with, with young players so that you can win sustainably. And it's harder to do when you're picking towards the back half and also when you're sacrificing picks as the Blue Jays are in the second round. They won't have a pick because they signed George Springer, had to give that up. Uh, there's going to be like 70 selections in between the Blue Jays' first selection and their second, but there will be a lot more young talent coming to uh, the Blue Jays organization throughout Monday and Tuesday as MLB's draft continues. And we will have it all covered for you at sportsnet.ca.